today we're going to be assembling this RB25 Neo cylinder head. Um, this is for a client of ours who is assembling a, uh, I think it's a 240Z Datsun. It's going to be uh, one heck of a build. For this application, it's going to be a stock rebuild, refresh, and just new valve seals. Reshim on the cylinder head, surfaced it, nothing too crazy. Uh, he just wants it going through, make sure there's no problems. site for most uh, machine shops or uh, engine builders. Um, the oil gallery plugs on uh, any RB head, any cylinder head really. And you'll end up with uh, debris stuck in the oil gallery that can end up plugging these little holes that you can see here in the cam journals. If you plug one of these holes in the cam journals that cam will starve of oil and pretty much snap, snap off. So we take them all out, one, two, three, four, four on top, pretty much eliminate any sort of uh, debris in the cylinder head. Um, next, we're going to run a brush through it just to make sure you loosen up any of the caked on or solidified debris that's stuck to the aluminum. Run our cleaning solution through here. Very clean. Okay, so next we're going to check the uh, main line. Um, one thing you can't do if the plugs are uh, in is check a light across all of these. Um, you can see in each little oil gallery hole now, if there's any debris lock, uh, blocking it, you will not be able to see the light through it. So go on both sides, see light through it, light through it, light through it. When we remove the plugs, uh, we always tap for a one quarter MPT. Uh, the intake side ones are one eighth MPT, and then the top ones are one sixteenth MPT. These four here. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of displacement on the front. This is the clearance side, so when you put the cover on, it'll hit the plugs. Um, so we always take our file, file it down, um, remove any sort of material that could affect uh, the backing plate. Um, now that we've cleaned it um, for the third time, I gotta go remove the, any of the silicone that's left on the cylinder head from the cleaning process. So we're just going to run a bit of valve lapping compound uh, across the uh, valve seat and valve face surfaces. Uh, just try to get the two surfaces to know each other again now that we've had it apart. Pretty much just replenishing that uh, machine finish that's there. We don't want to do too much, we don't want to do any machining, we just want to clean it up and uh, get it kind of new and uh, remove any carbon buildup between the two surfaces. So after we lapped it, uh, we just have a nice ring around here that's removed all the carbon buildup in the surface or on the surface. Um, you can see on the seat here as well, it's got a nice new ring to it. Put that one back in. So I'll just put a light bit of uh, lapping compound on there. Uh, put the valve back in. You want to go until you kind of don't hear the sanding sound anymore, it'll get quieter. So right there you can kind of hear the pitch change. Whether or not you can actually hear that when you go to edit it, we won't know. <laughs> You'll hear it. Pretty good mic, eh? Can you hear me fart if I fart? Yep. Yeah? Probably smell it too. <laughs> smell a vision. Let's go. <laughs> Innovative. Rejuvenating my mind right now with a pack of Lay's ketchup chips. Action. All right, so now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now we've got the cylinder head cleaned up, uh, we got our valves lapped, uh, cleaned all our components here. Our next step is to install a set of Supertech valve stem seals. I prefer to use these because they are Viton material, tenfold better than the OEM ones. Um, these are available on our website. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start installing these. Very simple to install. If I can open the bag, there we go. So the blue ones are the exhaust side and the brown ones are the intake side, these ones here. They come in packs of eights, you can get them in twelves as well, we buy them in eights, split them up. The brown one's gonna be your intake side, um, so super simple to install. Um, get yourself a set of these first of all, just a valve stem seal remover and installer. These are available, um, these are blue point, but uh, you can buy them in any Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. So you wanna lightly grab the seal with the, with the uh, tool. You don't wanna squish it too hard or you'll concave the, the uh, metal ring around it. 
light dab of oil on side of it or inside of it spread it around inside there and then you just push it on a little rock in a circle you can feel when it plants down all the way and that one's installed i used to use a hammer and a socket to install them but this is incredibly fast to do it this way okay next steps are after you got the valve uh, stem seals installed um, you're going to put your valve spring seat in. This pretty much just eliminates any kind of wear or galling between the spring and the cylinder head. Sometimes they can be used as shims if you need to increase your, I guess, installed height or something like that for the valve spring. So you're just going to want to install the uh, valve spring seat. It just goes right in the bottom there. Uh, every cylinder head is a little bit different. Um, these ones happen to have a machined I guess, cylinder in there, so it's kind of tricky to get it around it. electrical taped rag. So uh, this is my super tech, super high tech, um, I guess, uh, valve uh, stopper. Um, so the tool I'm about to use next is what I would consider aggressive. The first time I saw it, I made a, a very interesting face. So you're gonna wanna lubricate the uh, shaft of the valve just lightly before you install it, just to prevent any sort of wear during startup. Um, it'll take a little while for oil to get past the valve seal. Um, the valve seal does allow a controlled amount of oil down into the valve stem um, to lubricate your valve stem. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we're going to be using a valve spring installer tool. Uh, it's also a removal tool, but uh, you'll probably see that later on in one of our videos, on a disassembly video maybe. For now, we're going to be putting it in the install position. The first time I saw this tool, like I said, I made the craziest face. Um, you'll probably make the same face too. So pretty much, you got your valve installed, put your keepers on top of your retainer, and the retainer sits on top of the spring, just like that. Try to sit them a little more level. And then you install your spring, and you place your super high-tech valve stopper underneath. If everything goes to plan, you should be able to just push these down. Installed! You know, usually you're using this tool back here, right? You gotta open this up, you need a bunch of space, you squeeze your valve, and then you swear at the keepers for 20 minutes per valve. We just did that one in two minutes. Now we can put it back on the stands and uh, install the buckets, install the cams, measure for shims. Okay, so next up we're gonna be installing an RB camshaft. First thing you wanna do, um, because we're gonna be shimming the cylinder head, uh, which we'll be doing in a later video, um, I'm only going to use a lighter uh, assembly lube just so you can uh, pretty much not make a mess while we're measuring. A little bit of lube on all the contact points, shims, cam journals. A lot of people are afraid to install an RB cam um, because they don't have an install position really. No matter which way you place the cam, one of the lobes is always going to be pressing up on it. So what I do is I pretty much install it in the position that cylinder head uh, reliefs. The uh, cylinder head bolt relief cuts are uh, pointing inward where the cylinder head holes are. It kind of gives you the most level camshaft installation position and then I'll show you a couple tricks to install it once you have the cam caps on. Uh, don't forget to lubricate the top of the cam as well where the cap is going to be sitting and then these ones are labeled E2, E3, so on. Let's get them all started. So uh, first thing you want to do is place all the cam caps on after you've got your lubrication underneath them and then you're going to want to just finger tight so all the threads have been started um, and then you're going to want to pay attention to which lobes are pointing down. So that's this one and this one here and then you're going to want to pay attention to this thrust control right here so two things you want to do um, is basically typically people will tell you to install or uh, to tighten down each cam cap um, one by one slowly um, i'll tell you a faster way to do it if you just install the two that are facing down with the cam lobes facing the cam or the, the buckets um, you have a lot better of a time installing it and then you also want to focus on this one here so it doesn't jam up at an angle coming down so if you just start with these Tighten both of these two down until it's just barely touching. And then move on to this one, same thing, barely touching. This one you're gonna wanna follow up these two. You're not gonna wanna use this one as a, the initial torque. So these ones tighten first, then this one. These ones tighten first, then this one. So you only have to focus on three cam caps instead of all of them. Okay, so now that you've installed the uh, cam, uh, you've walked it down with just these three caps. Um, you can see these ones actually aren't even tight. Um, the bucket is not contacting the cam, so there's actually no strain or anything on them. Um, same with this one and this one as well. So you can go ahead, you can tighten down the ones that are loose now. Um, now that you have the 
cam, press them in the cylinder head basically, and then uh, just repeat for the other side. Uh, one thing to note on the cam caps, this is just a temporary install. There is sealant that goes here. We remove these after when we go to install the cam seal and we will silicone seal these as well. Um, this is just for install. We're gonna be shimming this cylinder head uh, later on. Now that we've installed the cams, um, our next video is going to be on shimming the cylinder head. This is a Neo uh, cylinder head um, from an RB25, so the shim system is a little bit different. It's more similar to a 2JZ than an RB26. Uh, there is obviously a torque spec for these cam caps. Um, it is 8.7 foot-pounds um, if you're watching this video to install your own cams. Um, that is the manufacturer spec. Um, we're missing the cam deflector plates, uh, oil deflector plates, um, but we'll get to that uh, in the next video when we do the shimming. But for now, that is a uh, basic quick rundown on the RB25 Neo cylinder head assembly.